Let's go to the tweets before I get to the calls and get on out of here, please. Let me go to this board right here because I want to get this up right now. You know, <clears throat> I like using my board here for these tweets because some of the tweets that y'all send in, I understand that, you know, y'all try to get at me, y'all try to talk to me about these things and what have you. And I like answering some questions, especially with the callers. But first, we're going to go to the tweets right now. At NY Sports and Pads with R.J. Barrett as his, you know, face here. Let's go to this. Favorite first take episode? I have many. Many first take episodes. Because I love doing my episodes always. I love working with Mad Dog Russo. I love working with Dan Olofsky. Ryan Clark, Swagoo's my boys. Ryan Clark is there. I'm sorry, Shannon Sharp is there right now as well. Me and JJ Reddick going at it one minute. Me and per Kendrick Perkins going at it another minute. Love it all. Love it all. But I have to admit, I have to admit, there are three shows that stand out. One was when I was on the air with Skip Bayless years ago after LeBron James had caught the cramps in San Antonio during the NBA Finals in like 2014 and DJ Khaled came on the show and he was like, yo, yo, it's not going to be, we going to handle our business. It's not going to be like some conspiracy with the AC not working and all of this other stuff. And Skip Bayless with Kerry Champion and hosted the show. Skip Bayless looked at him and he was like mocking him like, how do you know? How do you know about this? Who are your sources? And DJ Collins said, the streets, the streets, they don't love you no more. They don't love you no more. I swear to y'all, I, I still think about it and I start laughing because that was funny. The second one that comes to my mind was when I showed up down the block from AT&T Stadium and Arlington, Texas, and we did a show right down the block at the sports bar, and Michael Irvin showed up as a guest at that time, and the place was filled to the rafters, three levels. It was barely standing room, and all of these Cowboy fans had descended upon this place just to vilify me, and I loved it. Oh, I loved it. I couldn't get enough of it. Okay, so that's the second show. I mean, I had so much fun. I literally have talked to ESPN. Do you know what my dream is for First Take, which is my day job on ESPN? You want me to tell you what my dream is based off of what I just told you? I want to do a First Take show live from the parking lot of AT&T Stadium right before a Cowboys game during a tailgate party. I want them to, I, I want them out there drinking, like, you know, you know, getting drunk like skunks and walking around and talking this. No, no, going to win the Super Bowl next year. Oh, Stephen A. You I love it. I want to do it right from their backyard, but I want it to be a game I know they're going to lose. I don't want it to go and get some scrub team. I want, to go, I want them going up against a team that's quality, okay? But that's number two. My number one favorite was when Michael Irvin, came down there, came on the show on first take, and he did a Ryan Clark, and Ryan Clark, and he's doing a playmaker segment, right? And, and, the, and the theme of the segment was keep it spinning. Keep it, all you gotta do is go Google it and say, keep it spinning, Michael Irvin, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about, okay? And Ryan Clark said, what I got on, what I got on, the blue suede shoes, and then he started talking. And started sitting up there and gave it a Justin Field. Shut up! Not Justin Field! But he can't, they say he couldn't play. They say he couldn't play. They say he need a new quarterback. He said he need a new quarterback. They said they need somebody else. They need somebody else. What are they going to do now? What are they going to do now? Hilarious. That I loved. Those three stand out in my mind. But Shannon Sharp, on his first week on the job, pounding the desk because he kept calling me Skip, and it kept slipping out of his mouth. And then they did that animation with him as the Hulk pounding the desk. That was funny, too. I hope that answers your question. Let's go to the next tweet right here, please. Give it to me. At X Oop Gone, or Soup Gone, whatever the hell it is. X-O-U-P Gone. Can you give me a step-by-step -step playbook on how to talk to the ladies? Huh. <sighs> you know. <sighs> There are various ways. You know, <clears throat> it depends on the lady. 
You don't just walk up to everybody the same way. You have to measure the look of a woman. Some women look at you like they are not interested at all. Some women look at you like I don't know you and I'm scared because they're threatened by everything. And so it's not just about approaching them, it's where you approach them. They have to be in confines where they're comfortable and they don't perceive you as a threat. So that ultimately goes a long way too. A simple hello definitely works. If you have something complimentary, but not off-putting or offensive to say, that would help as well. A lot of times, you, couldn't, you go up to a woman, don't go up to her and be like, Lord have mercy, that body, the good Lord, I can't get, nope, that's just classless. That doesn't work because you've already objectified her and usually grown ass women don't like that. But if you sit back and she got on a nice outfit or she's not on a nice clothes, that looks sensational. You really, really do look special. And then if the door is open based on how she greets you, my name is such and such. What is your name? And just tell her I think you're a very, very beautiful lady. I just wanted to let you know that, okay? It's very nice to meet you, and I hope that I have the opportunity to see you sometime. I'm not going to even approach you too aggressively right now because I don't want to be off-putting and I don't want to be disrespectful. But... If I ever get the opportunity again, I would love the opportunity to just sit down and talk with you. You know why? Because you gave her an out. She could say thank you and let you go on your way. But if she's interested, she might turn around and say, well, you know what? I'm standing here right now. And then she can converse with you and have a conversation. You might be lucky enough because all you're after is some level of communication that will facilitate additional communication. And then you take it from there. Don't try to get it all in one day. Slow your roll. Be respectful and be incremental with your steps. If she wants you to move faster, she'll let you know. Now get on out of here. I'm Stephen A. Next tweet. Let's give it to me. At Who's Breezy UK, will you be playing the new GTA, Stephen? Not really. Not really. Grand Theft Auto's big time. The game has a lot of hype, and the trailer drops Tuesday, December 5th. For those of you who don't know, I know you didn't think I knew that, but I did know that. I know you didn't think I knew that, but I knew it, okay? By the way, I also know they're hinting at a return to Vice City. And if they're going about a return to Vice City, that's like after 21 years. Now, check this out. For those of y'all who don't know about Vice City, it's like based off of essentially Miami, like a Miami Vice. Me, I stop at Miami. Because let me tell y'all something right now, and I don't know if y'all ever heard this, but if you haven't, I'm going to tell you. Miami is a vice. It really, really is. It really is. And it's a vice that some of us can't overcome. It's a vice that most don't want to overcome. But it's a vice. Make no mistake about it. Grand Theft Auto returning to Vice City after 21 years. I hope that happens. It looks like that's going to happen. It looks like that's what that's all about. So guess what? I may not be playing it, but then again, I might, based on my nephews telling me to do it. I'm a busy man. I got a lot to do. But it don't mean I don't know what's going on. It doesn't mean I don't know what's going on. Next up, what you got? At Keto with Annie. All right, as it's short for animation. Which borough has the finest women? Now, you say borough, so I'm assuming you're a native New Yorker because when it comes to New York, it's the five boroughs. It's Queens, Staten Island, the Bronx, Brooklyn, and obviously Manhattan. Are you ready for this shocker? Are you ready for this shocker? What I'm about to break down to you. The finest women, the, bur the borough with the finest women is Manhattan. You know why I tell you my hand? You know why I'm telling you my hand? Take a guess. Let me tell you why it's Manhattan. <laughs> because everybody from Staten Island, the Bronx, Brooklyn, and Queens come to Manhattan. <laughs> that's why. See, when you go to one of those other boroughs, that's who's there. But when you go to Manhattan, that's where everybody comes. You don't go to Manhattan and just see somebody from one of the boroughs. You see somebody from all of the boroughs. When you go to the Bronx, chances are it's going to be somebody from the Bronx. You go to Brooklyn, people in the Bronx ain't trying to go over to Brooklyn. You go to Brooklyn, people in the Brooklyn ain't trying to hang in Staten Island. People in Staten Island ain't trying to hang in Queens. No. 
but everybody goes to Manhattan. Even cats out there in Long Island. They take in the Long Island Expressway. All right? Or the Long Island Railroad to the city. Everybody coming into the city. So if you want a taste of everything, if you want the perception of what a mosaic looks like, you go to Manhattan and you just hang around and you'll be surprised what you run into.